Welcome to this presentation where I'm going to present a model data-driven chemical analysis system for products and associated processes. The results of what I'm presenting are coming from an international collaboration project with partners from Bangladesh, from China, and myself from Denmark. I will start with the product process connection. What you can see is that there is a lot of chemicals based products that are needed by modern society. And these are produced from different manufacturing processes. In order to obtain the desired products that society needs, it is necessary to select the raw material from which they can be made and to design processes that can manufacture them in a sustainable manner. What this means is that appropriate choice of chemicals representing the product and chemicals that are used in the process affects decisions at various levels. In this presentation, I will highlight some of these and how they affect the product and process design. Let me start with uh, our database and some useful functions that we have added in the database. The database contains a large number of chemicals, also organized in terms of their effects, like harmful effects, hazardous chemicals, toxic chemicals, etc., as well as functions, pesticides, fragrance, refrigerants, and so on. If we take the hazardous chemicals, we have about 6,000 compounds and their harmful effects are organized in terms of acutely toxic, carcinogenic, and so on. So as soon as we know a chemical, if we have identified that chemical, we can find out if they exist, what harmful effects they will have. On the other hand, if we want to add a chemical as an additive, we also have about 43,000 compounds in it, and we have classified the, uh, their use in terms of their functions like adsorbents, cosmetics, deodorizers, drugs, food additives, and so on. So again, if we are looking for a additive and we know what is the function, by going to this database, we can find the chemicals. And then we can cross check if the chemical belongs to harmful effects, then we cannot use it. If they do not, then we can use it. So it's a useful uh, database option that we have developed. Now let's look at the product property relationship. As we know that uh, there are different kinds of products, single molecule mixtures and so on. The properties of those chemicals define different types of uh, effects. For example, there are properties that define the product behavior like boiling point, melting point, for example. They will define whether at a specific condition, the product will be liquid or not. Another one is uh, properties that define the product function. For example, solvent is supposed to dissolve a chemical, specific chemical, so solubility is important. If the product has a flow function, then viscosity would be important. For heat transfer, thermal conductivity will be important. For drugs, biological activity would be important. So these kind of properties define the function. And then, as we have seen, that uh, chemicals can have harmful effects. And so those harmful effects are also modeled or uh, listed, classified in terms of their toxicity, ozone depletion potential, global warming potential, carcinogenic, and so on. So we classify the pr properties into these three types, and then we can see for any chemical, which property is needed for what function, and then we can design the product. Now, let's see what are the properties. We have classified the properties into six different types. The first is the primary type, and the primary property means that every molecule has only one property value, which is a function of the molecular structure. The second uh, kind of property is the secondary property, which actually is a function of the primary property. So in principle, they are also a function of the molecular structure. The third one is properties that change with temperature pressure. So we have got those ones. These are usually correlations. The fourth one is mixture property. That means we have a mixture at a specific phase 
at a specific condition of temperature pressure composition and we want to know for example the density of the liquid mixture or the bubble point of the liquid mixture and so on the fifth are phase equilibrium related uh, mixture property so we have a mixture which is supposed to exist in more than one phase at equilibrium and then the properties related to that and the final one are the effects that we talked about the we call them environmental properties or environmental and uh, harmful uh, properties so log lc50 global warming potential by concentration factor and all so we have over 100 different types of properties we do not have data for all the chemicals for all the properties that's why we need models and so we have developed models for all these properties in the database we have about 75000 chemicals here is an example of the data analysis on the left hand side on data analysis you see the uh, the data for 17 different uh, primary properties uh, and this kind of analysis tells us where the model will work very well where we have to be careful in the region where we have to be careful maybe there are some outliers all these things through the data analysis we can find and on the right hand side you can see model performance of three types of model the on the left hand side the linear support vector regression is like a uh, the conventional group contribution type of model, simple models with small number of parameters, then a machine learning based model called input convex neural networks, and then also machine learning based a Gaussian process. What we can see is that the light color is the best model, the dark color is not so good. Uh, the conventional group contribution models do not work for all the properties, but at certain ranges, some of the properties are well modeled. On the right-hand side, we see that uh, the Gaussian process works very well, except for one property model. <clears throat> the difference between the two models is that uh, the simple group contribution model, one can do the calculation of the property on a simple calculator. Uh, if the parameters are known and there are, for example, 400 parameters for log P data, which is about 12,000 data points. On the other hand, for the same property in Gaussian process, we need 10 times more parameters and the model uh, in order to calculate the property, we need a solver. So that's the difference. But we want to use both these types of models and other types in our computer aided product design. <clears throat> also, we have mixture properties. I will not go into the detail of it, but in order to calculate the mixture phase equilibrium properties, <clears throat> we also need parameters for the model. And if the parameter is not available, we have developed a kind of a predictive model where it will not need the experimental data to get the, let's say, the binary interaction parameters. So when we want to calculate properties of a compound, we go to the knowledge base for database uh, retrieval property. For pure compound property, we go to ProCAP, which also has mixture properties. And an option for mixture property is shown. So if we use the option that I'm showing on the right hand side, <clears throat> we will need a different kind of solution approach because uh, the model is uh, very time consuming, whereas the other one are simple. So let's look at the, the steps for solving the problem. <clears throat> the first step is to define the problem. The second step is to find out which design template to use. The third one is based on the definition of the problem <clears throat> and the design template, which kind of method to use. G and T is generate and test. CMD opt is optimization. Hybrid is a combination of all. And then finally, we need to verify. All of this is put in a software called ProCAPD, where we can do single species design, functional product design, formulation design, device design. All of these can use different versions of databases, solution methods, property models. 
<coughs> and product function calculation routines. In this presentation, I will highlight the chemical substitution problem. And here it means that either a product has been designed and we know the chemicals or the process where it is used, we know the chemicals, or it's a new one where also we know the chemicals. And what we want to find out whether any chemical does not comply with the REACH or the EPA regulations. And if they do not, then how to substitute it. A very typical substitution problem is, let's say substitute benzene. Benzene has good solubility properties, but has carcinogenic effect. <clears throat> so if we want to replace benzene with its good properties, not its, but not its bad, so we say we want acyclic alcohols, ketones, aldehydes, ethers, which are known to be um, uh, not carcinogenic. So we have then building blocks, which can create for us the type of molecules we want. The building blocks then will create <coughs> molecules. The molecules then will give us isomers. And once we know the entire molecular structure, from our collection of models for properties, we can calculate the property and we can check if the conditions have been satisfied. So the steps would be starting from the non chemicals, evaluate the identified chemicals, check for contamination or contaminant. If they're not, we, uh, we verify the product and certify the product. Uh, if they are contaminant, there are contaminant, we uh, identify the contaminant, we substitute the contaminant, we verify the product, and we certify the product. So in each of those steps, steps one, two, we need property and database. In step uh, three, four, we need solver tools, that is the molecular design. Uh, simple example I will show here, not all the details. Let's say we want to replace refrigerant 143A with binary, ternary, and quaternary mixture because the global warming potential is high for this. So we first find out what is the performance of this chemical, and then we replace it with boiling point, with uh, <clears throat> replace it to match with the boiling point in binary mixture, in ternary mixture, boiling point and critical temperature, or in boiling point and critical pressure, and in the third, quaternary all the three properties so boiling point critical temperature and critical pressure are the target properties so what you can see is that we can find some nice um, candidates for binary and ternary mixtures that satisfy the requirements this is not optimized in any way but it's just highlighting how it can be solved and here both the product and the process are being designed we are finding the mixture and at the same time, we are doing the process simulation. Other problems that have been solved, I will not go into the details of it uh, because of the shortage of time, but ethylene glycol can be substituted from an uh, inch and coolant. Methylene chloride can be substituted in paint and epoxy removal. Uh, more details can be found in the <coughs> cited literature. So what we can see is that in order to solve this kind of problems, we need, in addition to the software computer-aided product design, it needs property tools, databases, so that is supplied with ProCAP. It needs process model, process calculations that is supplied with ProCAFD, and special versions of this can be generated uh, through by collecting the different components and putting them together, which we have done for as a refrigerant expert. So refrigeration expert will mainly study only the refrigeration related processes. Finally, in conclusion, I've presented some of the important issues related to computer aided product design. To increase the scope, we need to apply <coughs> integration of data models and methods. Uh, availability of an extended database uh, extends also the application range. High accuracy is needed. Uh, can be achieved through versatility of the property models. And finally, all the above are available in Pro CAPD, a software reliable for, for reliable, fast, and consistent synthesis design analysis of chemical products. Thank you very much.